Welcome to the Bold Analysis, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much for your continued support. Today, the 28th August, um, of course, we have another day to thank God for the gift of life. Tomorrow, the 29th, Kakamega County is going to vote in their next governor who is going to take charge from um, Oparanya. Mombasa County is also heading to the poll to vote in their governor. Um, amongst the other, Andrew Ronkai is going to vote in MP. The person is going to take over from Raymond Moy or whether he's going to, going to be given another term. And the other by elections that had been scheduled by the IBC. So one thing I want us to look at here is that UDA seems to have abstained from those active campaigns. And both UDA um, and Azmila Omoja are very strong, uh, have very strong candidates, especially in the two counties of Bombasa and, uh, and, and, and Kakamega. UDA is having a governor candidate, Hassan Omar, running against Abdul Swamad Nasir in Mombasa. And in Kakamega, Cleophus Malala, who is running on ANC ticket, is facing off with Ayub Savola and Fernandez, Fernandez Baraza and Ayub Savola on an ANC ticket. Now, even though UDA reinforced logistics for Glyphus Malala, that is in Kakamega, and also there was some reinforcement on um, campaigns by Amar, Omar Hassan in Mombasa by the injection of Sonko, but they have actually abstained from those campaigns. Why do you think um, they're sitting back? I want to make, I'm making this observation because Regadi Geshagwa, after um, I think for the better part of this week, was campaigning, campaigned in Mombasa, not in Mombasa, in Rongai, and he went bare knuckle against Raymond Moy, um, calling on the voters in Rongai, in Nakuru, to make sure that they don't vote in <laughs> Raymond Moy because allegedly Raymond Moy is from a dynasty. Now, that one, they went and campaigned for direct UDA candidate. And, of course, when I was trying to uh, maybe just ask questions about what might inform this, there is a defense that because Deputy President is now President-elect, um, maybe he's decided to sit back. But that is not um, still strong. Uh, that's still a very strong reason because Today, Deputy President was in Bungoma, and after holding church service, he held some roadside rallies there and made some speeches there. So if Ruto was to abstain from campaigns, active campaigns, then you wouldn't even have seen him in Bungoma. Bungoma is not very far from Kakamega, even though now I think the campaigns had, the time for campaigns had closed, William Ruto did not go to campaign for Malala. Neither did he go to Mombasa to campaign for, um, uh, for Hassan Mumar in Mombasa. Despite the fact that Raila Dinga camped in those two areas, Raila campaigned in Mombasa and also in Kakamega, I think in the span of the last three days. These by elections for me um, are very, I'm so keen on these two by elections because they are going to be indicators on people's feelings um, in case of everyone is called. We, I think Kenyans, or rather the political class, will have to gather very good knowledge on Kenyans. And if the ODM party, because those two areas are believed to be strongholds of ODM party, if ODM party will successfully defend those two seats and win those seats, I think there will be a face or rather a mood of victory. That will still be an additive, um, that will still be an advantage on their side. In case of a run, because someone wants to feel um, these by elections after they were postponed, 
and I want to agree with people who believed that the postponement had some effect or was not coincidental as we were treated to believe, but maybe there were strategic decisions that were made or strategies that were being laid to suppress Raila Odinga's votes. And the objective could be that after results are announced and maybe uh, the Supreme Court makes a verdict and the president is found, someone will want to use that victory euphoria to go and campaign. And that is what I think um, 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 Davadi campaigned for Malala in, in, in Kakamega saying that the Kakamega voters should choose between being in opposition and being in government. I have also noticed that not even Boni Halwale was campaigning for Cleopas Malala. So Malala remained a lone ranger. But then, what could have informed the decision by Kenya Kwanza to abstain from the active campaigns, despite the fact that they have been, they have been in the mood of victory? And Deputy President believes that he is the fifth president of the Republic of Kenya, respective, irregardless of what happens. Before you do that, look at those um, few observations we can make. I want to humbly request you to subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell, and like our video. Remind, a reminder is here to our viewers. We are seven days to the end of 15 days extension of Sarah Tieno's medical fundraiser that is going on. Um, we, Sarah Tieno is one of our subscribers here. She's been sick in Kenyatta Hospital. The bill, uh, sick of acute leukemia, so the bill inflated to 1.1 uh, million. 1 1.5 NHF NHIF covered bill, then it was at 1 million. Cumulatively, after doing 21 days challenge, we were in a position to pay 829,000, including a bill that was also, part of it was also footed, 150,000 was footed by uh, NHIF. So Team Bold were in a position to raise 679,000. The balance is 215, and I believe that we can still just make sure that this is mission accomplished. And I want to say thank you. Thank you very much, guys, for those who have turned up and have supported Asanteni Sana. The message is so many, they are overwhelming. I cannot respond to all of them. But I want to believe that all those I have been reading all, sometimes I can't respond to all, like Asanteni Sana. Thank you. This is a big step. Now, why do you think Kruto doesn't want to get into the campaign mode? They have all the bragging rights of being a ruling party. But if you ask me, I see a strategy that Ruto is avoiding a platform to posture his contested win. Because one thing is known, that if UDA decides to assemble a team, go to um, maybe assemble a team in Kakamega, campaigning in Kakamega and Mombasa, and the UDA core team, the Ndinti Nyoros, the team, it could be that um, these fellows will go there and might use that campaign platform and chance for chest thumping, declaring themselves the government of the next regime, and Ruto would want to avoid that scenario. Because, uh, of course, there is a Supreme Court verdict that is going on. I have an analysis that is stuck to this in, my, I think, my next, my third video of the day today. But he knew very well that if he would have charged his crowd, his members or his allies, they would have gone there, camped in those areas, and it would bring a charged political confrontation. But you can also look at it this way. UD has a governor candidate in Mombasa. ANC have a governor candidate in Kakamega. These two seats are actually... ODM, incumbent, the first governor, those two counties. And we can say there have been ODM zones. So what UDA might have done, or rather the Kenya Kwanzaa Secretariat might have decided to do, is to just abstain from all. And this is technically to knock out Musalia Mudavadi. 
Because if they were to get to the campaign, then they will campaign for both Malala, or rather they will support both Malala and the Mombasa one. They might have realized that um, the Mombasa race is going to be tight between Abdul Swamad and um, Hassan Omar. Maybe they wouldn't mind who might take it. But there in Kakamega, Ruto, Ruto's party would also be comfortable with that seat going to ODM instead of Musale Mudavadi. Because as we talk now, Mudavadi do not have, I think he only have one governor, the Lamu governor. So if he is to get a governor in Kakamega, then two governors, then that is going to increase uh, his stakes compared to the rest of the principles, especially um, Bungoma senator, who already then have one governor, that is the governor of Bungoma. So I can also see internal wrangles within Kenya Kwanzaa that have stifled the campaigns in these two by-elections. It can touch into many other things, even the finances and, and all that. But I can also see the Vardy being changed here, that UDA is withdrawing, Ruta is withdrawing, not purely in the interest of not, not just supporting the UDA, but also the ANC candidate. Because the ANC candidate needs more lifting compared to the one in Mombasa. Mombasa already have lifting in the name of uh, Mike Sonko. Now, uh, this is also something that uh, you can you can see. These two elections, um, due to maybe the intelligence that Ruto, because now Ruto receives those briefs, huh? maybe yes, they did their own in research and realized that the areas are slippery, and he would not he would avoid a competition of UDA party against the ODM. Now, this competition, he would actually avoid that competition because if UDA and Ruto was to go and campaign there, the areas are going to be charged. And when they are more charged into this election, if UDA wins, then it will be a slap in the face. The media stations, uh, the media will run with a story that William Ruto's party loses first election after being declared president-elect, after Ruto was declared president-elect. So he doesn't want this to dent already the, the glamorous reputation of UDA that UDA have scooped. You know, they're bragging of numbers, even though in the National Assembly it is contestable. In the Senate, they have tried a single party compared to the other parties. And so if they were to lose these two, because there is a probability if they put all their effort there, and they lose, then it will be a loose for the UDA party. But then, <laughs> I, I think there is something that um, you can also look at here. Ruto has a baggage of the vote rigging. And according to the petitions that are going on, there is the, gen the dominant narrative that Ruto, the votes were rigged in favor of Chebukate. Now, if you look at Raila's messages in those two areas, it's like he's been campaigning there but telling them that the election was rigged at the national level and so even down there, there should be no rigging. So if Ruto was to go to campaign in Kakamega in these areas, I see the rigging garbage would have suppressed the candidates. So it's that situation that says, ah, we will see Kuja, Kustababu Kikuja, that issue of Kwamba Meibakura will work here and the people in those areas might actually see that uh, Ruto bringing in the rigging garbage is going to suppress the votes for the Kenya Kwanzaa candidates. So it's, it's in the interest of making sure also that these candidates do not suffer the bad reputation that Ruto can inject in their campaigns in the light of the rigging narrative that has emerged uh, over this Supreme Court move by Raila Odinga. And, and so this is something that will be, and the presence of Ruto will reinforce that narrative. Even though you see the president is so silent and people seem to be reading a lot of it from him, and the only person, one of the people that is worried about um, President Silent is President, uh, it's, it's President-elect William Ruto. Now, I think he's also avoiding campaign trail to avoid the public outburst. 
the public outburst with Raila Odinga because when you respond to Raila Odinga outrightly, you might be might cross paths also with the president Uhuru Kenyatta. And you might, you know, at the campaign trail, Raila was Uhuru's project. So if you will go according to them, I want to get that, that, that disclaimer. If you go to the campaign trail with the Raila's coming so strongly bashing him, of course, that confrontation is coming out. And I think Ruto would not want that. But last, let me say. If there is a rerun, then there is already a narrative that there is going to be low turnout or voter apathy in Raila Odinga strongholds. It's a narrative that has been tapered. I don't know who is who really proved that because people seem to have agreed that there will be low voter, there will be voter apathy. So Ruto is only also just trying to draw so that to make sure that the areas are not so charged. Because I can say that if these elections come out and Raila wins and there is all that national euphoria about it then it will create a ground for the rerun. But okay, Kenyans are still ready to go back to the rerun. Guys, it's also time for us to compare. The votes that the governor candidate in ODM is going to get and the presidential votes vis-a-vis -vis UDA uh, candidate governor or Kenya Kwanza candidate governor and William Ruto votes. But this time around, because there's voter apathy, we're so keen to look at percentage because that will also inform what might have happened guys that's my bold analysis and you can also give us your reason why Ruto and Geshagwa abstained from Mombasa and Kakamega gubernatorial campaigns